something remarkable happens to feed this spark plug. We have our coil here, and we've already mentioned that 12 volts and about 5 amps enters into the coil. And what happens, which is fascinating, is that there's a winding inside this coil. As the electricity first enters, you turn the key on, electricity first goes in here, it instantly creates an electromagnetic field. That's because whenever you run electricity through a coil of wire, it creates an electromagnet. Now, when it's time for the spark plug to actually fire, the ignition coil takes the electromagnetic field and allows it to collapse. It converts it back into electricity, and it enters the secondary winding. And there's another winding in here, which is connected to the tower. Okay? This is the winding that leads to the spark plug. What's remarkable is that the electromagnetic field, as it is being converted to create a, uh, the, the spark that we're going to need, can create any combination of volts and amps as long as it stays within the watts that it has to work with. So that means that what's going to happen is she's going to be able to create more and more and more voltage while creating less and less amperage. The coil will sense how much resistance she's up against and will build and build and build and build enough voltage until finally she can make the jump. Okay? In other words, she will continue to make whatever she needs in voltage, 6,000 volts, 10,000 volts, 20,000 volts or more until she has what she needs to do the job. Now, what's really interesting about this is whether this coil is feeding one spark plug or eight spark plugs, it will raise and feed each and every spark plug exactly what that one needs each and every time. Now, a person might ask, what causes differences in the amount of spark that's needed? Okay, well, when the spark is getting ready to make the jump, several factors can create different types of resistance and call for more voltage to get across. The easiest one, excessive gap. If the gap here gets larger, then obviously the resistance is going to be greater, more voltage is going to be needed. Something a lot of us don't recognize is that heat has a lot to do with it. The whole idea of electricity is that electrons are swapped from one atom to the next to the next to the next. They're kind of like passed along. Okay? That happens more easily when things are warm. So when this spark plug gets to be around 800 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, it actually needs less voltage to fire because the electrons can move more freely. Of course, the opposite is true. When you go out to start your car in the morning and the spark plugs are dead cold, it takes more electricity to fire them. Something else is if the spark plug is dirty or worn, it will create resistance. Spark plugs are made in different heat ranges so they can be self-cleaning. Make sure you're running the right plugs for your engine so they can remain clean. If your plugs are worn, it's time to replace them. Compression will also impact on the resistance that the spark will encounter. Higher compression creates more resistance. So again, it's going to call for a greater spark. When the air-fuel mixture is on the rich side, it actually requires less electricity to fire. The reason for that is the electricity can jump across the molecules of fuel that are in the air-fuel mix, much the same as you might walk across stones to get across a creek. Conversely, if the air-fuel mixture is lean, there's more resistance. That's why so many engines misfire when you accelerate hard. When you push the gas pedal down hard and fast, you get a moment when the mix is lean and sometimes spark plugs will misfire. Now, what happens if the resistance where we're trying to get across is just plain too high? Well, the answer is easy. If I take my spark plug representation here in the rubber band, three inches is fine, at 12 inches is fine. If I keep pulling it, trying to get more and more, what will happen? It will break. The same thing happens. The coil is going to try to build and build and build and build and build enough voltage to get across the end of the, the spark plug. If something goes wrong, if it's too much resistance. If it's more than the coil can produce, she simply will fail to fire. When that happens, the electromagnetic field just dissipates into the air and the engine experiences a misfire. The other thing that can happen is if there's a lot of resistance in the spark plug, okay, we can have a totally different problem. As the voltage is climbing from inside the coil, it's looking for some place to get to ground. If it finds a different place, one with less resistance, it will go there. For example, a crack in a spark plug wire will allow the spark to get out the side and jump across there. A carbon trail inside, you turn your distributor cap upside down, if you have a carbon trail inside there, it will follow the carbon trail. Along the side of your rotor, if there's a carbon trail or a crack, or inside the rotor if there's a crack, it will follow that to ground. And sometimes even if the porcelain on the side of the spark plug is cracked, it will go out that way too. Are some coils better than others? The answer to that is yes. Okay. The amount of wire wound inside the coil, the attention to detail that's used in designing and building the winding, and the quality of the wire itself all contribute to how well the coil handles heat, how much voltage it can produce, and how fast it can refresh after it's fired. 
So what have we learned today? We've learned that our ignition coil is really a transformer that takes voltage and amperage as it's available and converts them to a voltage that's enough to jump across the end of the spark plug gap. The moment the voltage is needed, the amount of voltage is needed, excuse me, changes as the resistance changes, and the quality of a coil will help to meet the needs of every single plug. Thank you.